Germany sends Ukraine ramjet artillery shells to reach out and touch someone. A ramjet artillery shell that can triple the range over traditional 155mm howitzer shells could change the calculus on the ground in Ukraine. Does anyone get that reference? How old is my audience? Uh, reach out and touch someone was like an AT&T slogan from the 80s. Man, I feel like I'm aging really fast. Hello friends, Wes O'Donnell here, defense writer, speaker, veteran, apparently a geriatric Gen Xer. The war in Ukraine has become something of a proving ground for how well NATO weapon systems perform against large nation-state forces. But it's also been an intelligence windfall as the US Department of Defense transitions away from two decades of fighting insurgents. Relearning how to fight against big standing armies is a process made easier by analyzing what works and what doesn't in Ukraine. So what keeps Western military leaders up at night? Well, the US military and NATO have dominated the skies since the end of World War II. In fact, they've based much of their military strategy and doctrine around air power. While Russia, perhaps wisely, gave up trying to compete with NATO in the air during the Cold War and just decided to create really good surface-to-air missile systems, they also doubled down on artillery as their dominant capability. But in a possible future war with Russia or China, the US may not enjoy complete air superiority and will certainly face off against an enemy who fields more technologically advanced armor and artillery, at least more technologically advanced than America's insurgent enemies during the global war on terror. Indeed, in Ukraine today, artillery has made a roaring comeback as a capability that can decisively determine the outcome of an engagement, whether on offense or defense. The biggest lesson learned this past year of fighting in Ukraine is that range matters. He who can shoot furthest dominates the battlefield, but absent air superiority, there are only three ways uh, to extend the range of a projectile. First, you can increase the muzzle velocity. The faster the projectile comes out of the barrel, the further it can go before drag and gravity bring it down to earth. Now this requires a longer cannon barrel or a more powerful propellant or both, and each has its drawbacks. Next, you could add lift surfaces. This means adding wings and fins to the shell, like a missile or a miniature aircraft, to make it more aerodynamic. The more lift generated, the longer the projectile can travel. Of course, the wings and fins and electronics all must survive the shock of being fired from a really big cannon. Finally, you could add post-launch propulsion. The US Army has had rocket-boosted howitzer shells for decades. The easiest way to do this is called base bleed, which is simply a small package of propellant in the back of the shell. This usually doesn't give you any measurable propulsion, but it does offset a lot of the drag. The new XM-1113 rocket-assisted projectile goes 40 kilometers or more from the current M109 Paladin cannon and 70 kilometers from the XM-1299 Extended Range Cannon Artillery, or IRCA, now in development stateside. But to strike even further afield, you need something more than traditional chemical rockets. What if I told you it's entirely possible to break 150 kilometers with a ramjet artillery shell. Let's face it, Western artillery has been playing the tortoise in the race for range. While we've seen impressive leaps in precision and mobility, sheer range has remained frustratingly static. Meanwhile, rivals like Russia have been lobbing artillery rounds from distances that make Western gunners feel like they're bringing a knife to a gunfight. Rocket artillery in particular dominates the battlefield with ranges that outclass traditional cannon fire by threefold. Enter Boeing and Norwegian company NAMO, riding in on the US Army's XM-1155 program like knights in ceramic armor. Their mission? To create a long-range solution that doesn't require an entirely new artillery platform. And the result? is a cutting-edge, ramjet-propelled shell that works with standard artillery 
No major tinkering needed. So how does a ramjet shell differ from traditional artillery? Well, all jets work by sucking in air at the front end, compressing it, mixing it with fuel, and igniting it, creating thrust out the back. The military shorthand for this complicated physics trick is suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Oh, behave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby! Man, I love Austin Powers. Can we get another Austin Powers movie? Somebody get me Mike Myers on the phone. At subsonic speeds... <laughs> Hold it together, West. At subsonic speeds, you need to mechanically compress the air with some kind of fan like the one at the front of passenger jet's engines. But at supersonic speeds, the air coming in the front of the engine is so fast that it compresses itself without mechanical assistance. Now you've got a ramjet. The hard part of a ramjet, traditionally speaking, is getting your aircraft up to supersonic speeds. But getting shot out of a cannon gets you there. So ramjets are a natural fit for artillery propulsion. The biggest advantage of ramjet shells is the significant increase in range. Ukraine would be able to effectively strike any target in Russian-occupied Ukraine from well behind the current front lines. Another advantage is that they use the oxygen in the air itself as the propellant. This reduces the amount of onboard fuel a traditional rocket-assisted artillery shell might need. However, there are several drawbacks. Because the shell must have a shock-resistant guidance package, the amount of space for the explosive payload is smaller, potentially reducing the big boom. That same guidance package, as well as steering fins and the ramjet technology itself, makes each shell more expensive than traditional artillery shells. The new 155 ramjet artillery shell is designated the XM-1155 Extended Range Artillery Projectile Program in the U.S., now Germany's Rheinmetall is stepping up with an unnamed artillery shell prototype capable of hitting targets at greater than 100 kilometers. Not as far as the Norwegian ramjet shell, but still impressive. According to Rheinmetall's CEO, this round is on its way to Ukraine for testing right now. Capable of outranging most existing artillery systems, it offers a range that even surpasses high-end solutions like the HIMARS fired guided multiple launch rocket system and glimmers, which tops out at 70 kilometers. To put it in perspective, the longest range German artillery shell currently deployed in Ukraine is the 155 millimeter Volcano, which can strike up to 70 kilometers. The decision to send prototypes to Ukraine isn't just about aiding the defense forces. It's also a real world stress test in one of the most dynamic and demanding combat environments in modern history. Ukraine has proven to be an invaluable proving ground for next-gen military tech, from AI drone swarms to counter-battery radar systems. By deploying these prototypes, Rheinmetall can gather data, refine designs, and potentially fast-track production. That being said, Germany was mum on how many rounds Ukraine will receive. Probably a small batch meant for evaluation rather than widespread use. Beyond the prototype, Rheinmetall is scaling up artillery production at a breakneck pace. Germany revealed plans to produce 700,000 artillery shells this year, a staggering tenfold increase over 2022, and ramp up to over a million annually in the near future. To meet these ambitious goals, the company is building new factories in Germany and Lithuania with plans for another facility in Ukraine. There's also the question of what impact a ramjet artillery shell might have on counter-battery radar. Well, first of all, would Russia's diminishing supply of radars even be able to effectively track a ramjet shell? And if so, the range is such that even if it could be tracked, the Ukrainian artillery would be well out of range thanks to the long range of the ramjet shell. Ukrainian artillery crews could sit back safely out of range of the Russian counter-battery teams and plink targets all day long. Napoleon once said that God is on the side with the best artillery, but best is increasingly qualitative rather than quantitative. That is to say, better artillery, including better ammo, trumps large numbers of artillery units. 
And if these ramjet shells prove successful, well, let's just say that the days of safe zones behind the front lines could be numbered. For now, all eyes are on Ukraine, where this shell will either prove its mettle or fade away into the dusty books of military experimentation. Keep an eye on Ukrainian artillery over the next six months. You just might catch a glimpse of the ramjet shell in action, whether it's from Norway or Germany. That's all for today. Subscribe if you're not already. It really helps the channel grow. And as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Slava Ukraine.